so the uh, <clears throat> you kind of talked a little bit about the difference between the the Latin American scene and the North American. Um, I've seen like YouTube videos and stuff recently talking about how massive Spanish YouTube compared to North America. Um, did you see like a higher kind of ceiling for one or the other? Like, was there? I know you said that the, the like North America is a little bit more like competitive, but you know, like payout or the room to really grow and be like so. That's a, that, so when it comes to. Uh, Obviously, every single. Sorry. You can hear Jojo in the back. <laughs> it, when it comes to, how could I describe it? Because I don't want to use the word, like segregating the communities. That's not what I'm trying to say. Mm. When it comes to finding that differentiator between them, skill ceiling is definitely one. Like I mentioned, there is probably more tournaments within Latin America at like a higher frequency than there was in North America. Uh, at least like smaller skill tournaments. Majors were only really held in North America. There wasn't really like any sort of org or any sort of like company trying to pump money into into like the Spanish community. Uh, I would actually host a quarterly tournaments and I would do like a like a low price of like a hundred dollars and and convert it to whoever's currency it was. So like if a team that won was Mexican, you know, hundred dollars and it's like twenty pesos. That's like two thousand pesos, and we, we would pay it out that way. And it's more of like a the community itself kept itself alive for so long. So different teams started hosting like invitationals. Uh, the quarterlies were a thing. Some streamers would host their own tournaments and invite players and, and they would either play in them or cast it themselves, which obviously helps the streamer as well. I have, you know, part of the reason I did it as well. It helped, it tremendously kickstarted my channel. And within like, I want to say within the first, the first two months, two to four months of casting, I went from about 30 followers because I only stream to myself, right? Like I would stream only so I could watch my gameplay later. And it went from 30 followers to around 210 within like four months, which which doesn't isn't a lot. But if it's based off of a console only Spanish only streamer at the time, that was like a big number for me. I was like, holy shit, like people are actually I mean, watching that's, me. That's a just amount, especially for, for stream. Yeah, and special and for a small streamer like me, that felt like that was like the biggest bump. And then my casting was probably was very uh, looked upon as as a very high level of casting especially since i had the game knowledge from previous plays uh, i would try to like describe plays make it sound equal and and sort of have like a you know since it's like a at the time i had beef with probably every single team so i I probably had like an issue with every single player, so it was non-biased because I did not like anybody. <laughs> so I, you would never hear me like like overtly uh, compliment somebody, which was a big issue with other streamers. Because again, since it's such a small community, uh, a caster would probably be seeing their friend play, and you would see that the friendliness kind of slipped in, since it, it's more of like a like a less frigid less cold type of com uh, community and i feel like that's that's just how latinos are like we you know everybody's family if they're nice and everybody's a third cousin if they're not right so so that's probably uh that's probably like the major difference i would like to say the closeness skill ceiling 100 percent north america is better there's less there's more players that are not strictly north american like you would have north american teams that were contracting players from like france to play with them, even for their ping, or they would like fly them out, depending on like the, the capital they had. And and you would see that North America isn't really North America, it's like North America and the imports. Because some people just didn't want to play in Europe. Uh, the is style it, of playing everywhere is differently, so. Is it because North America's got that kind of money base of people Putting on those those major tournaments, 
stuff like that where I don't even know, I'm assuming Europe would even have a decent amount, but with all the companies kind of here, I'm assuming there's kind of blinders on sponsored in North America, so everybody kind of come here where it sounds like these other kind of communities are left to do it themselves would easily be an open market for for some type of yeah, so like uh, major. De definitely the money investment was major at least and again this is talking from the console standpoint and probably from the pc standpoint the the money influx was huge in america especially because america is you know all of the competitors are kind of centered toward oh if we're in america we can compete in the u.s right and and they kind of see it like you'll see argentinian players travel to the u.s it's not something where it's like spread out right like like it's not like oh some majors are in canada some majors are in mexico and cancun there might be some but the majority are held in like la uh the overwatch league for example was held in brooklyn for for a while and i don't know where they are right now i think dallas i might be wrong but uh uh, the Call of Duty League, I think, is in Atlanta. Uh, so it's just, you know, like it is Painful all centered here. City. Exactly. While in the US, you'll have like, oh, yeah, like we'll have, you know, the Germans play at the German majors mostly. And then the people from France will most likely play at the France majors and they'll, they'll travel, but not to everyone, right? Like, unless they're like a major org, like, I don't know, Rogue was a, was a big org that started like that. And they were like purely French players, like six French players, and they were dominating, right? Like they they, they went from like France and came to the U.S. and they were kicking ass for a while. Uh, you know, uh, so so it all it all really depends. But I think it's more. I don't think there's less money in Europe. I just think the North American money is way more centered, and it's way more like a what's it called? Like funneled into the United States rather than any other part of North America. Like there's, you know, nobody's doing tournaments in Alaska. Nobody's doing tournaments in the north of Canada. Nobody's doing tournaments in the south of Mexico. Everybody's doing tournaments in San Diego, California, Miami, New York. Like it's all, all it's all within the states. They've got a set budget and they take a large flop, put it specific spot somewhere else. And, and it's less same budget, but then they're like spreading it out. Because yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure if you gather, if you gather all of Europe and all of North America, Europe is probably putting in more money. The thing is, Europe is so fucking big, right? And and they don't really have like that one centered city or that one centered area, country, uh, unlike uh, North America and even South America. I, even the South Americans travel to play in NA. Nobody plays in SA service. Well, they they do, but it's not as big. Right, and so like the dream is to move to the U.S. and make it big playing there. Uh, but in, again, you can have like a tournament in Germany. Bam! Next one, next week France. Next week Spain. And not all the teams are going to travel there, so the money's there. It's just that the localization, uh, it's a much wider spread net for it, I guess. So it's, so it's a bigger like fish. If we had, had, you know, New York. Tournament in New York, then Rhode Island, then New Jersey, then Ohio, it, then it, Florida. It, then... Imagine, imagine it this way. Imagine we had, imagine you and I were players, and you and I had a tournament, a tournament in New York, for thirty-five thousand, and then our our orgs were like, hey, there's a, there's another one in China next week for twenty thousand, and then you can come back all the way to like, I don't know, Australia for fifteen. So like, you're gonna think to yourself like, damn, maybe the Chinese one isn't worth it when I have more chances of winning in Australia, so I'll stay away. But again, if it's like New York, let's see what else. New York, Milwaukee, Chicago. Shit, I'm traveling. It's a two-hour flight. It's not a 14-hour flight. It's not like a you know, like traveling between European country to European country. Just from Ireland to Spain is probably like seven hours, right? And then you have to deal with like is it really that if far? there is just. I don't know, I'm, I'm throwing an estimate. There probably has to be, like, probably, let's 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 give it more realistic. Let's do I Italy to Spain. That's probably, like, that's probably around a seven to nine hour range. Because Italy's, like, South Europe. I don't know. I don't know. I, I used to be, I used to do, like, geography competitions in, like, the fifth grade. And then I lost. And, and after oh, that, I, like, I know, geography like, when people talk tour. about, uh, like, Europeans coming over here and, like, they think that you can do, like, Grand Canyon, uh, 
can hit New York, the Grand Canyon, and then hit Disney World like all in a single weekend. Yeah, because because for them it because for them it doesn't matter because flights are so comparatively short compared to like if you're trying to travel from one European country to the other, and it's and, and we're talking like major countries again. So so like Portugal, uh, well, it's like a major country because I feel like I've mentioned Spain, Germany, France, and then I haven't mentioned anything else. So let's let's see Portugal. <laughs> Those to, are the only countries that exist. One sec, I gotta see. Yeah. You know. Okay, so going from like Spain all the way to what was that? Whatever the so going from the most eastern, the most western portion of and like going from Spain to like Poland is probably like crazy, right? Like maybe so, maybe even you don't have to go that far. Actually. It looks like a lot like, of the made like a lot of the major cities are all are countries are all kind of in that one area but it looks like their, their size is a little Europe's a little bit bigger than the, the US but like you know Germany England France Italy Spain that whole western yeah, but we also have to think we also have to think like and again this might just be me I'm not sure if this is how European travel works but Every com every country there's an individual country, and I'm guessing they have their own borders, their own laws for travel, yeah. right? I I'm guessing it it's way because if I want to if I want to go to right, I'm in New York. If I want to go back to Puerto Rico, or if I want to go to like I don't know Florida, I just hop on a plane and, and that's it. I don't have to show any paperwork. I don't have to show nothing. I don't know if they need like temp stay visas, right? If they need any any sort of documentation, especially now with uh, vaccination, I think. I think they have it differently. They don't have vaccination cards. They have a vaccination QR, which shows them their whole like medical record and shit. Uh, like I know that they they all more likely for a European to have a passport that had like come from here instead of having an ID. Like they carry their passports around, like, they carry around the, the driver's or like mm -hmm. that's because I know like it's pretty common to hop between like country, West Palm State country, but it sounds like since there's so many different. Like every country wants to have their own major league, such especially that western portion, that compressed area. You know, it you've got you've got five thousand dollars to spread between fifteen competition compared to five thousand dollars in I, America that's spread between like three. If I, if I'm dropping, like you mentioned, more or less, if I'm dropping fifty thousand dollars in in North America. They're all going to the U.S. If I drop fifty thousand dollars in Europe, they're gonna be split between, fuck, Hungary, Spain, uh, a major in Greenland. Let's get a major, and then you know, like it is, it is you have so to compete in more competition. Too. And yeah, and it's for, it's further travel. It's not a car ride away. Yeah. I can I can drive to to Miami if I really wanted to. If I really wanted to get to a tournament from week to week, I could do a two day drive. I'm, I'm not gonna, but. I could, in Europe, there's no shot you can drive from, like, you know, one side to the other in like two days. Shit, you probably can't even fly from one country to the other in a day, right? So, so it's hard.